What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cooking with Greggy Second Helping. I'm Greg, and this is Josh McCuga. Yay! Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. I Thank love you being here, man. I'm well, we love doing stuff with you, McCoogs. Well, we've been talking. We've been talking about this since the live stream, like right. two live streams. Right. Because apparently, so. this is going to be your carbonara recipe that was too unhealthy for Chrissy Teigen. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> story goes like yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so when I was living in LA, when I first moved there, I was delivering groceries for like this high-end grocery chain, right? Sure. And she was one of our regular customers. <laughs> it wasn't in Halsey. <laughs> I wish, that would have been higher end than what I was doing. And I walked in there and she was like putting recipes together for a cookbook. I was like, do you have a carbonara in there? And she, she was like, no. And I was like, well, let me just show you real quick my recipe. And she's like, I think that might be a little too much bacon for my carbonara, a little too unhealthy. And I was like, too unhealthy, yeah. how dare you? You're eating the thing now. I mean, we're making great things. It's killing me, but I, I don't know. know. That, so that's how bad this is going to be. This is fantastic. Remember, Cooking with Gre Greggy, uh, season two is all about giving you easier meals, cheaper-ish meals, something you can impress your friends and family with. So that's what we're doing today. And this, uh, friends and family, this was taught to me by my uncle when I lived in Italy. Nice. And uh, it's easy for, like, let's say you're cooking for four to six people. Sure. This is the recipe for it. You know, oh, these yeah, yeah. aren't individual dishes, so okay. it's fantastic. And you can double the recipe really, really easily. Everything is like, I've cooked upwards of three pounds at a time. Jeez. So you can, as long as you have a bowl big enough to mix it all together, yeah. you'll be fine. Uh, we're gonna make, today we're just gonna make one pound of pasta, so good for four to six people, depending on appetite. Okay. Obviously. And the best part about cooking carbonara, and the only way to cook carbonara is one, you have to have a different apron than that, and I apologize. I, listen, I think you're a spelt guy, and right, I don't think now. you're team fat. Listen, no, no, now this is a traditional I, apron for team cooking with Greg. I have you got a Josh, Josh one. Yeah. and there you was got a, a wedding one? gift. You got a no, no, I've got an Amanda. Amanda one. It says Amanda. <laughs> so you get to be my Amanda today. Yay, <laughs> Greg. Right, fine, fine. Yeah. Sorry, Jen. He gets to be Amanda today. Oh, is it, is, man, the apron goes to the marriage? <laughs> like, that's how it works? Like, well then, that, now it's getting interesting. I can't wait for my trip to Quebec next year. Uh, and the other most important part is when making carbonara, you have to actually consume alcohol. My favorite thing. And the best part also about carbonara is you use like a splash of white wine at yeah, the end. Yeah, so you just have a bottle of, of white bottle, wine, right? Yeah, yeah of course, exactly. awesome. So, and like men, We'll put a little ice in there. Sure, of course. Well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, you know, chill this one in time. So there you go. I'm also a big fan of white and rosés with ice in it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I want you to know that last night, oh, and obviously, Rose. you're only oh, here. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming, boys, girls. Thanks. Well, we know yesterday at the end when we started prepping for tomorrow and talking okay. about what we're going to do today with you. Sure. Nick put the fear of God into my wife about you. <laughs> When Nick was just talking about how you drink. <laughs> and we've, we've all seen it. I mean, you know what I mean? But I don't think Jen, Jen's usually there going with us, not paying attention, not seeing what sure. the other cars in the lanes are yeah, doing. No. And now she's got a front row seat. Well, he was like, he's going to come in and start drinking immediately. I'm like, it's going to be 10 a.m. I mean, it's 3 o'clock somewhere. Right? Exactly. You know what they say? It's 10.53, close <laughs> enough to 5, enough. you know what I mean? So well, get me fast. started. Where do we start? Of course, okay. obviously, ingredients and directions are all down there. So as we start drinking wine, look at the description. That'll have more information for you. So the best part about the carbonara is you can basically make it. It's like uh, my mom would make it after school, sure. right? So it would be a dinner item. It's like it's like Italian mac and cheese, right? Okay. So you take your four eggs, you throw them in the... Usually, like, uh, the traditional is you'll break the egg over the pasta. But that's just for a single dish, like, at a restaurant, okay. right? So I take four eggs for one pound, like, four eggs for one pound of pasta. Throw it in the, uh, I'm not great at cracking eggs, I'll be honest I'll, with you. And I'll, I've said it before on this show, I think last season, these are also those organic eggs. So they got the super shells. That, you got to, don't, you think you don't have to hit it that hard, hit it that hard. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean, Nick? These aren't the ones that you're dying on Christmas, on Easter. No, you exactly. Know, you need no, those no, egg no, no. best for Please. those, those chickens. And Nobody the would do that to Judy's eggs here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Extra large brown. Every um, one of the chickens got a name, they sign the box before they go out. Now the hard part with, um, with the prep of the carbonara, what takes you all the time, yeah. is chopping the parsley and like and chopping up the garlic. Sure, you know? we already we've, did that. We've already done that, pre so that's easy. So Shout out to pre-prep. Way to go. We're just gonna take, this is probably enough garlic. Garlic, obviously an overpowering <laughs> flavor. <I don't> <laughs> you just wanna brown the garlic. Yeah, I've got none of those pans back there going, so it's up to you how it's you fine. wanna do it. You have your water starting to go. Let's put the water that. on the back burner. Water on the back burner. Well, I'll just say it, you keep. There you go, you got it. You know how to, you, I'm looking, now I can get supervised. I like this. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, you know, I get to launch you super. Yeah. We're on it? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're just gonna brown the garlic, just throw a little bit of olive oil in there. There you go. Some oil. How much you want in there, a tablespoon? Yeah, just like, enough that it's 
Yeah, like throw it on time. There, give it a little more. There you go. Not, no, no, don't block the little, camera. Come here. Uh, Cheat out right. Come, come on, man. It's, and now we'll reenact it. I went. Man, <laughs> man. <laughs> you gotta then, do it, right, Nick? Because oh, when it go when it goes out, you know what it looks like. I won't say it, but it looks like it. It's like ejaculation. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I'll tell you blah, what. Blah, blah, blah. That's what it looks you like. You guys are <laughs> kind of funny. You're always getting sexual. Come on, I'm a Catholic boy from Pittsburgh. I can't be hey, talking about that. What a nice little life hack with bacon, mm -hmm. especially to cut, uh, to cut it and to chop it, is to freeze it. And then once you pull it out, you can just cut it because bacon naturally pulls apart. But if you have a sharp enough knife, it's fine. Oh, we Greg do not. keeps his knife. That's pretty sharp. <laughs> we do not have sharp knives here. Um, <laughs> we're just throw here. We'll put this over here. Sure. Right or now. put it on the table. Here, I'll slide more over so you can. Uh, there you go. Is that fine for you, Nick, or no? Uh, put it. Put it on the table. Yeah, right. There you go. Okay. Um, so you're gonna. You want to cut it like, I like to say pinky length. You know, like if people say two fingers of scotch, like one pinky of, of bacon. It's correct. And when you, the best part about making carbonara too is your kitchen just smells like bacon and garlic. There isn't much better yeah, than buddy. bacon and garlic. Greg, you know. I do. Thanks for watching that garlic over there, buddy. Really I got you, man. I'm gonna brown it up nice and get it off here for you. Once this starts cooking, then you can kind of go about your drinking, really, because the rest of the prep is great. The water starts boiling, the uh, the music starts playing, people start yelling at each other. That's the Italian way to cook. And if the kitchen isn't people yelling at each other, you're not cooking well in the, in the Italian family. Now what? the beautiful part about the bacon, again, is that with, with the, <laughs> <laughs> <Look at> that. <laughs> let's just say this isn't like part of some paleo diet. Okay? It's not like a diet food, if you will. Uh, so you put the whole pound of bacon. Don't look for, because a lot of places will cheat you on the bacon and be like, it's a pound and it says 12 ounces. Look for 16 ounces of bacon. One pound of pasta, one pound of bacon. Um, is that a baker's pound? That is a, it's a baker's pound. You putting that on at high heat? High heat. Got it. The bacon will start cooking. Um, and when you pour off, you'll pour off like a little bit of the bacon fat, like of the bacon grease. But you want to throw a little bit of bacon grease oh, in the pasta. Oh, you need it. You need it to you keep need it, it lubricating. It. So if you got the parsley on top of the egg, this is the best part. And again, a lot of the prep work is in the shredding of the Parmesan. If you are in a hurry, you can get the shredded or the also like pre-Parmesan. Uh, an Italian. It's you better to grate. It's better, better to have great. fresh. Yeah, you get some forearm workout. You know, before you add all the calories, burn, them off. burn some calories. Now, oh put it all in there. It's fantastic. I like to whip first, and then basically it's salt and pepper to taste. Depends on how much you, want, you want. Oh, just a fork. Okay. Josh McCuga hates whisks. I've never been a whisk guy. Wow. It seems like it's hard to clean. Thank you, Kevin. You know. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's a nice looking fork right there. That's all I have. Nice looking forks. It's that San Francisco fork. Us in LA, we got our little forks. There's one thing Greg Miller knows, it's forking. <laughs> in San Francisco, road forks you. <laughs> so the beautiful part about this is like, you want the consistency to almost, almost be like pancake batter. Not that thick and not as thick as waffle batter, if you will, but almost like pancake batter. See how it's like, it sits there. I was like, you're different. <laughs> no, waffle, waffle batter is like thicker so that it can stay on to the, the thing the, the press. The press. Every time we hang out with Josh, we learn something new. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you want it, see, so like basically when you're whipping it, the eggs are already broken in there. The cheese makes it, the cheese basically is your flour in carbonara, which is pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, we can actually probably toss a little toss more parsley. In there. Yeah, I got more for you if you need it. Oh, that's plenty. I don't know if you want presentation wise. You, you want it to, I mean, look like almost like a polenta, you know polenta? Yeah, I do know polenta. Yeah, so like a polenta, and then it, it'll like be able to rest in the thing. You don't want it to be soupy. If it almost looks too soupy, just add cheese to it. Gotcha. Or don't add more parsley, whatever. And then with the salt and pepper, I like to kind of just like, almost make it snow falling on cedars, if sure, you will. Sure, sure. Remember that movie? Cider yeah. House Rolls. Yeah, movie. little Cider House Rolls. Definitely a different movie. <laughs> Spider Man. There, was, there was snow in Cider House Rules, I believe, from the trailer and or poster. They were I don't in remember. Maine. It snows Christ there. Sake. Yeah. Like they also ate lobsters then too. Josh said Spider Man because he knows Tobey Maguire was in one of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Tobey Maguire, my best friend. Not the best. Do you not uh, like him? You got a fight with him? No, not a fight. If you guys want to see a funny YouTube video, watch Josh McCuga interviews Tobey Maguire. 
I interviewed him for a movie called Pawn Sacrifice. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, Bobby Fischer. Yeah, Bobby Fischer. And I bombed the interview. I went out, we went to the premiere that night. It was when I first started dating Amanda. We went out to like 4.30 in the morning. My interview with him was at 8.15. <laughs> I walked in still drunk, like still really drunk. And I went to the to his like publicist who's right outside the room. She's like, no Spider-Man questions, no rapid fire questions, no funny stuff. And I was like, that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked in there and I was like, hey Chess, man, huh? uh, it's a great movie. So like, did you research like second graders at a birthday party for your role? Cause he was kind of like a petulant child. He was like, nope. And I was like, great, this is gonna be awesome. And the guy, the guy behind the camera, you know, like the, the director of the whole thing just looked behind the camera and was like, Ooh, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> You want me to push your bacon around? Yeah, I get, let me, yeah, yeah, push it around. Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking. I'm just yeah, go ahead, push it around. So again, I like to go a little, not heavy on the pepper, but I like black pepper. Do you like black pepper? Again? I love black pepper. Okay. So you, again, the salt and pepper for you at home is to taste. I'm not a big salt guy, so like a pinch of salt, you're good. And also got to throw a pinch of salt in the water. Nikki's playing to the camera. I like it. Okay. And the water is heating, the uh, bacon is looking, looking good. solid, solid. All right, so now we got a good rolling boil on the pasta, on some uh, farfalle, allora. Uh, bow tie if you're not fancy. Bow tie if you're not fancy. And again, you can use bucatini, you can use a linguine if you want. Yeah. I don't recommend spaghetti and I don't, do not use angel hair. I've used penne once, it just doesn't get in the grooves. Sure, 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 sure. You could use a uh, like an orchiette, the okay. ear, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like the ear pasta, you could use that. But other than that, I, I highly recommend the farfalle. What if you took like a manicotti noodle? Just made one. <laughs> one giant carbonara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put all that in the center. <laughs> <laughs> Did it cook? I think we're eating raw eggs, guys. I'm not really sure. <laughs> there we go. That's clean. Uh, oh, the bacon is perfect. That bacon looks good. awesome. Here, cut, cut over here, let him see. Uh, oh, you yeah. want to close up on the Barrett cam? Go show it to Barrett. Oh, he, this, these don't get textured. Look at that. And there's just like that perfect amount of grease because I poured out about half of it. So what are you going to do now that the pasta is boiling in about five minutes? Because it takes about 10 to 11 minutes for the farfalle to perfectly boil. And I'm not an al dente guy. I don't know if you're an al dente guy. I like it al dente. You like it al dente? But I don't, I don't mind. Do it. This is your thing, dude. Okay. Uh, Again, when you cook it home, do it however you want to do it. Yeah, however you want to do it. However you like your pasta. You want to put peas in there because you're some kind of weirdo, go for it. Go for the peas, it's fine. If you want to try the heavy cream, and also a lot of people put onions. I can't eat onions. Really? Like, oh, my heartburn goes through the oh. roof. As soon as I hit like age 27, I started getting onion heartburn. <laughs> but, oh, I'll fight for the bacon, don't you worry. <laughs> I'll fight through the pain for the bacon. Onions aren't worth it, bacon is, it's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, and now what we do the garlic. is we take this garlic, you guys can see, just like if you guys can see on there, it's just like, it's only, if you say it's brown, but it's like yellowed. Sure, it's dark. It's darker. The most important thing I think is knowing what it looks like raw in olive oil versus when it gets some color. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't actually it's, want it to get brown because that's pretty much black and then that's pretty much. You're it, done. And then you're done. And, yeah. and garlic Hold turns on. so. Oh, you're doing fine. I was going to say just cheat a little this way. Uh, your garlic turns there so bitter and black so quick. And that is a perfect amount of garlic right there. Again, just a, uh, like a, a like a heaping teaspoon. Is that what we did? Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. Oh, tablespoon. Tablespoon. Yeah, we did. So like a big tablespoon, which is basically like four to six cloves of smushed and chopped garlic. If you are at home wondering how we got that, get rid of all that good olive oil, mix it in with the bacon. It's so good. And that pan is done. Again, not a ton of, not a ton of cleanup. No, this is doing great. Yeah. And here's our bacon grease. If you guys are at home, this is a great lubricant for chains on bicycles. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Sex. Uh, just sex, <laughs> sure. Uh, put it in a squirt bottle, make inappropriate noises with it. You use it on door jams. Uh, you could use, like if your head gets stuck in one of the banisters in like sure. a sitcom in sure. the 80s, yeah. you can use the bacon grease to pull it out. Remember that Boy Meets World episode? You guys know what I'm talking about. Nick does not remember that <laughs> Boy Meets World episode, but he's definitely had his head stuck in a yeah. banister. Yeah. <laughs> would you believe I put my head in places it doesn't belong? I would, I would. I could see that, I could see that, I could see that. That's why you're so risk averse now. Yeah. See how it's like it's re-foaming perfectly up there? You got that nice re-foam like of the bacon. Oh, yeah. Can you guys see the foam? Oh yeah, Don't that's the there. good stuff. Yeah, always do that. And then here, this is this is the most fun part. This makes you what you look sexy in a kitchen. You got your new girlfriend. She's sitting there, no, third it's my date. Wife. I know. I'm just... <laughs> oh. And it's got that nice little. Oh. And it comes up, and then just let that cook off for a little bit. 
The bacon can now cook in the white wine. Uh, she's a beauty. Cannonball, finish it, yeah. <laughs> Boom. And we got it. Ah, thank you, sir. No problem. Kev takes, the world makes. Now the Italian move, uh, Nick, I don't know if you, if your grandma did this for you. You're cleaning over this way so they can see you. Oh yeah, my bad. No, it's fine. Grandma used to just go like this, nothing else, and just put it on the counter. Grab it. How's that feel? How's that taste? <laughs> ah! Top. That's the problem, that's the point. Okay. Good. Oh yeah, good. Oh yeah. Done and done. All right, so oh. we're gonna throw the, yeah. You just put it in? Yeah, just put it in. All right, grab me that olive oil, Gregory. Okay, that's good. Just t douse a little bit on it. Burn. And then shake it up. Get rid of that. Yeah. All right, now Greg, you're gonna grab the pan of bacon. Yeah. All right. In three, two. Where, where am I going to do You're gonna dump it on top of oh, the okay. pasta. In three, two, one. Pasta goes. Bacon goes, put the whole thing in there. Look at that bad boy. And then I just need a big a spoon. Now everybody's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It all cooks to the egg in it. All you gotta do is toss it, I guess. And you just toss it until, all, the base, I always toss it until it looks like the cheese is gonna be stringy. Interesting. Get all that bacon mixed with all that pasta, and see how much easier it is to toss with the farfalle yeah, with the instead yeah, of. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you had a, like a bucatini, which is again is not impossible, but if you have the bucatini, it's a no, little. I'm helping you. I'm grabbing you. Right um, if you have the bucatini, it bucatini. might a bucatini. It might just get like you'll lose some bacon. You won't get all the egg cooked to it. And the important thing is that you're not eating. When raw you say egg. the egg, yeah, I was gonna say the egg cooked to it. You're looking to. You're spinning it around with all this hot, with all the hot uh, uh, pasta, the hot uh, bacon, yes. to get the egg to get to not an omelet texture, but I mean to do what basically an omelet would be doing. Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah. You're. You are. I mean, you know, you don't want to eat a raw egg, obviously. Sure. So, with all of that hot stuff in there, and we've whipped up the egg. I mean, it's you're basically just scrambling eggs with pasta. Sure. And bacon and parsley and Parmesan cheese, a little bit of bacon grease, some white wine. And then you'll see, like, look, I mean. This looks great. Look at the texture, and like, you can bear it if you want to get the camera in there. Like, this is the most beautiful part. When you're tossing this bad boy, you see that you can just scrape the edges with it. And it's like, it almost looks like you're like making a, like a pasta soup, but it's eggs, cheese, bacon. Sure. Parsley, it's just fantastic. The salt and the pepper, and now here, like I like it to look a little more like there's a, maybe a little more black pepper. So why don't you just, like throw a little more black pepper? It's right here, right here. Throw a little more black pepper on it. Keep going, like you're a waitress at Cheesecake Factory. And I'm lo you're looking salad. at the guy waiting yeah. for somebody to say, say stop. When. Say when. <laughs> like when you come by with the cheese. Say yeah. when. <laughs> when you're good. Morris? Okay. You're good. Sir, please, my arm. <laughs> you're good. My forearms are jacked. Uh, and then let this cool, like let it cool for, I don't know, three to four minutes, and then it's just ready to serve. Do you want to transfer our serving dish we yeah, have over here? Yeah, let's serve, let's Then it can sit there, it can do beauty shots while it cools. You can mix in the blue bowl, but when you serve, right? You, you can serve in the blue bowl too, you right? You can serve, totally serve yeah. in the blue, that's totally fine. We're just here trying to make a good looking TV show. If you're, if you're like a, if you're a kid or you're a young dad and you're like, hey, I want to come home and make an Italian mac and cheese, which is basically is like a bacon mac and cheese. And that's the thing, real quick to stop you. Like I've had carbonara restaurants before and never thought of it as a mac and cheese. Watching yeah. this and what, I'm like, now I get it. Now you I see what you're talking mac about. Mac and cheese, right? Uh, you, like you come home after work, you only have 45 minutes to cook something that's delicious for your kids or whatever. Even though it's not exactly healthy, <laughs> oh, or whatever, <laughs> whatever, you have this dish, and it's actually it's very good. Or if you're having a dinner party with four people, you make like a, a nice arugula salad with it, maybe some garlic bread, whatever. Oh yeah. A couple bottles of a couple bottles of red, a couple bottles of white, get weird, and then you put it in this bowl. And when you serve it in this beautiful clear bowl, oh my god, you've got just, I mean, that's the kind of stuff Martha Stewart puts on the cover of her cookbook. Right? That's true. That's true. Bacon, parsley, pasta, egg, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, garlic. That's it. A little bit of white wine. It's easy. It's pasta carbonara, Lacuga style. <laughs> All right. cool. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, right. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen's loss is our game. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. 
It's so good. Oh it's God. so creamy. And it, and there's no cream in there at all. I know, right? It's just cheese and like the bacon, I'm, I don't know, man. It just, for whatever reason, it just works so well. It's fantastic, Josh. That's and it doesn't taste like overly bacon. It doesn't taste overly no, garlic. No, you don't understand how bad it is for you. Unless you made it. <laughs> Unless you saw <laughs> Otherwise, you're like, oh my God, what a light, it. delicious, yeah. Uh, yeah, salty dish from the bacon. Mm -hmm. Yet creamy, but no cream, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is it doesn't have the acidity of milk that I think hurts so much sure. when you put in a cream. Sure. Holy crap. And a lot of times, you know, like when they make individual ones at a restaurant, mm -hmm. like if restaurants were to say, hey, which I think would be a really cool idea to, in Italian restaurants, and don't steal my idea, because I also thought it would be a good food truck idea, yeah. is like, hey, oh, you want carbonara? It only comes in orders of four, eight, or 12. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So like yeah, yeah. this this should serve four to six people. Sure. So if you order the carbonara, it's like when you go to a steak restaurant and they're like, hey, this a, is a, a porterhouse for two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Porterhouse for three. This is your carbonara for four. Uh, and it's for the table and you set it down and yada, yada, that's yada. That's a great idea. There you go. Because then you don't have to do the individual egg on the thing. Josh, you changed the carbonara game. Thank you so much for bringing this by for us. Good. Thank you for having me. No Love problem. You, Ladies and gentlemen, of course, I want to see you make this. Hit me up on Instagram, hashtag cooking with Greggy. Include Josh, of course. Uh, we want to see how it comes out for you. In the comments below, let me know your family carbonara recipe. And of course, like, subscribe, share. Keep coming back for more Cooking with Greggy. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I'm Amanda. <laughs>